Another day, another acronym. Tonight, Guy and Tim will spell out why they think gold will glitter in 2023. Tim, hold your horses. Guy's going to kick us off first. Oh, okay. Billy Bob Thornton, a mm. huge fan of Fast Money, yes. as you know. One Watches of, every night. He was in the movie Friday Night Lights, and the team that he coached was the mojo. And it got me thinking, you know, I lost my mojo with the dawn. dawn. I, it was yeah. tragedy. So I'm looking <laughs> to get it back in the form of these four things. <laughs> the M in my mojo. It's metals, Mel. Gold and silver, there's something going on in the gold market. I think I understand central banks buying it in record amounts. I think silver has a run it as well. Metals is my M. The O, OIH, look at where that sucker closed today, despite the fact that crude can't get out of its own way. All these oil services names are still cheap in terms of valuation. I think they go higher this year. The J, it was a battle of the Johnsons. <laughs> nice. Johnson and Johnson, of course, I mean, J and J, but Johnson controls sustainability in terms of autonomous buildings and stuff. That's going to be a bit of a buzzword, sustainability, this year. JCI at the forefront, trades in a market multiple. I think that goes higher. And, of course, the other O, you got to give a shout-out to Warren Buffett, who is also watching. How you doing, WB? Occidental Petroleum has been buying that hand over fist. They've been retiring debt at a record number. They're also buying back stock. Their balance sheet is excellent right now. Energy works, Oxy works in that space. Mojo. So when I saw Mojo, I actually said Johnson Controls, not mm -hmm. Johnson and Johnson. There you go. That you did. was that you're was, in his head. I, I said that to you in the. So what, how did you decide not Johnson and Johnson? Well, I, I was weighing the two. And Johnson and Johnson has had a huge run. It's a great company. You can start to get a little concerned on valuation. Johnson Controls, on the other hand, has sold off pretty significantly from the all-time high. I believe it saw in December of last year. So this was more a valuation thing. And you know, Steve Grasso last night was talking about sustainability. I almost fell off my chair. Got me thinking. You know, the whole mojo thing is coming. It's all full cycle here. Isn't Johnson and Johnson the Battle of the Johnsons? <laughs> I just, I'm just. Can't snort it. <laughs> Sorry. Just asking a good question. Well, there's a great story about that in, in CNBC lore. We'll share it at another okay. time. That's a whole other show. You know, uh, um, time for Tim's <laughs> acronym for 2023. Tim. Yeah, my acronym is LAGS. And by the way, it's likely to lag my acronym from last year, which happened to have done really well. I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm toot my own horn there, but lags. These are these are essentially companies that I think, for various reasons, were never participating in a post-pandemic rally. And, and I'll start this with my L, uh, Lyft. I, I recognize Lyft has substantial problems, but this is a company that pre-pandemic had substantial problems. And I realize we 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 certainly value companies differently today than we do. I still think they get to a billion in EBITDA by 24. I think they the driver issues, and I've said this before about Lyft. It's an idiosyncratic story in the middle of a recession. Their problems are not the economy. OK, their problems have been their own and some of the dynamics around the regulatory environment. The A is the A in airlines. And what we've heard, especially from Delta, is probably how I'm playing. And I'm certainly long. I'm long lift, by the way. I'm long Delta. Uh, and I think if you listen to the airlines, especially the ones that actually have balance sheets, uh, they're telling you and they're talking about profitability levels that are at pre-pandemic levels. We're getting that transcontinental back. We're getting a story back. I don't think that Delta is going to run away with it here, but it never got that reopening trade. The G is certainly uh, gold and gold really lagged in a world where there was a time, especially when inflation was in your face, hey, why isn't gold rallying? Karen says this all the time. There are reasons why every day you could come in and say gold is a reason to own it for this reason and this reason. All the reasons why you might have wanted to old own gold didn't work, except for the fact that now a dollar that's peaked, inflation that's peaked, and stagflation is every reason to buy gold. And S is finally uh, S&P Global. I think their recent investor day, until then, people really didn't know what to do with it. I think the story has been kind of lagging the fundamentals. And if you look at their, their info deal, I think it's a very important deal if, if you look at the margin accretion. And I also think that in this environment, they will actually perform in a difficult market environment. So again, lags companies that have not done what we think they should have or the cycle has not allowed them to rally yet. They've lagged. By the way, mm. Tim's acronym for 2022 performed very well. Good for him. Live, mm. right? Las Vegas Sands, Internet, which is Chinese Internet. Which was down, but, but it, so it was, it was K-Web, which was right. down 15%. But uh, V was volatility, which right. was up 35%. Then, but E and was energy. E Ooh. was energy, and that was up 60%. Las Vegas was up. Eh, look at that. Hey, the live trade. Nice. The live trade. Is but I'm a humble man. I wouldn't trade. talk about these things. <laughs> no, of course myself. you wouldn't. Yeah, of course. We could talk a little. We have time. S&P Global, <laughs> though, that's an interesting one. We hardly ever yeah. talk about that name on the show. I think the general once yeah, pitched general it as a fast pitch. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's an organic growth story that, that really within a, a multiple that makes sense for this market, not yesterday's.